Hey guys, I'm the Pickled Narwhal. Welcome back to possibly the final video of the Outer Worlds, which is crazy. So I um, upgraded my stuff a little bit. Um, I also have a change of scenery. I'm in a different room now. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm in a different room now. I, I switched rooms with my daughter. So she has my old office basically and I have her old room. And uh, yeah, I was gonna use the green screen but it's not close enough and everything of how... I, I'm, I'm trying something new and uh, I was like, I'm gonna do a green screen, but then like where it works isn't close enough so the chroma key can't really pick it up all that well, so eh, whatever. So it's just gonna be back there. So anyways, let's go to Tartarus. So you are about to assault the labyrinth on Tartarus and determine the fate of the Halcyon colony. Um, saves made after this point can only finish the main story on Tartarus. Side quests and downloaded content, such as Peril on Gorgon or Murder on Eridanos, will be unavailable for any saves made beyond this point. If there's anything you want to do before you enter the prison, do it now before you cross the point of no return. Would you like to continue? C. Would you like to save? C. Let's save over the DLC. Alright. I am pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the Labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. They gotta catch me first. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. That's fine. Okay, know anything useful about Tartarus? Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. Girl, I'm gonna return. Um, you promise not to leave without me? I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain, unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Okay. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of EDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. Okay. Um... What is it with you people? Yeah, wh what the hell is with you people and landing violations? I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. Wow, 200. You're up to 5,708. Not what? including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. Okay, what the fuck? Um, hey, do I... How do I know you're a real officer under that helmet? Show me your biometric ID. Woohoo. Alright. I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the ID of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Is that from the Groundbreaker? Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. Haha. <laughs> How can I be of assistance? Okay. Talk to you later. Be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Okay. Well, let's let's do this. Oh man, I'm nervous. Remember that you are not insured. Yeah. Thanks, Ada. <laughs> I'm aware. Jesus. Alright, here we go. Man, it's crazy that we're already at the end. I didn't think it would come so fast, but then again, like I said, oh! I've been recording this since like January. Okay, um, so yeah, so if, if, uh, hold on, okay, so if, uh, you know, I get caught, uh, 
I can just lie my way out of. Right by us now oh! oh. Push on, cool. I was like, I was so confused, but cool. I get help here. I may as well, I mean, they're helping me. Chee hee. I'm gonna take everything, even though it doesn't matter at this point. Uh huh. One button. Wait, I think that person's on my side. Oops. <laughs> oh no, now I'm killing our help my helpers. Hold on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oops. Okay, let's try that again. My bad. <laughs> Somehow we ended up killing them too. All right, here we go. Take two, take two. Well then, I guess they can, I guess they can take on the dudes. While we just go for it. Look at that, it's actually lasting. Whoa. Wow. That's spooky. How long we last on the surface? This might be the loneliest place in the whole system. Yeah, when I make this uh sad. So guys, this is it, huh? Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Lead the way, boss. I got your back. Let's see, can I stealth this or am I just gonna go through guns blazing? This is a question. I think this way leads to, well, either way. Let's see. <coughs> Ugh, excuse me, sorry. Don't mind me, just walking. Oh crap, well. Walking, walking, walking. Walking, walking, walking. I am an employee of uh, UDL. Yep, that's me. Um, look at that, I might actually get it. Okay, this way. This way. I am totally an employee of the uh, UDL. Look at that. Ooh, vending machine. Ooh, vending machine. So don't mind if I do. Hello. Mm-hmm. It's Rizzo's holy shiitake. Right, we got multiples. We got guns that do a shit ton of damage. Hey, look, one of those. I already souped mine up though a little bit. Um, so we want this. And then we want this. Let's see. Is there. If we can push these back more. So much junk. Do one of these have a an automatic that I can use for Parvati? Because hers is level 20 currently, but I mean it does- well, no, her stuff is- never mind. It does like oodles of damage. Okay, transmit- transition to the pit! Oh god, I'm not looking forward to the uh, fight. But I should be good. Okay. So I just have to get through this. 
Ooh, what's this? Access storage manifest. <laughs> uh, dimethyl sulfoxide canisters, straight jackets, ballistics vest, hibernation chamber, indoctrination pamphlets. Okay, so in, out. So they're out of straight jackets. <laughs> they have dimethyl sulfoxide. They don't have straight jackets or ballistic vests. They do have hibernation chamber. They don't have indoctrination pamphlets. They have forced pacification system refills, hibernation chamber, material storage, and shipping container. I guess I'm reading that right. Um, an analysis from engineers Rodfield, Crane, and Geist, or Geist, beginning with the requirement that every chamber receive a constant supply of at minimum 34 kilowatts and that occupants of these chambers be injected with a steady supply of UDL's patent Vito hibernation fluid and this run on sentence carries on for 12 pages before finally concluding. And thus, in order to maintain structural integrity throughout the area designated the pit, we recommend that chambers are installed in cylindrical fashion around a supporting structure, dug into the crust of Tartarus to a maximum depth of. This conclusion extends to another two pages. Thank God. Okay, so that wasn't anything important. Hello, upstanding citizen. It is I, a fellow upstanding citizen. Later. That's so funny because usually, like, I don't get through this uh, smoothly. I have to fight everybody. Let's go, troops. Stellar Bay's counting on us. Hey, Stellar Bay. The Stellar Bay's. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hell yeah. They they can fight. I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. I'm about to lose my disguise. Ooh. Look at that, I'm glad I went up in here whenever I did. Oh, I still have to lie. Oh no, I don't. Look at that. Got it. Heads down. Well, they're basically being distractions. Right? I can go ahead and I can get caught and then lie, right? Isn't that? What was it? Are you new yeah. here? I didn't think we were hiring more staff. Yeah, okay. Um, persuade for you. Are you talking while on shift? Oh, no. Don't tell anyone, please. Alright, everyone gets one mistake. Just don't do it again. Your secret's safe with me. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Big bet. Uh, they're over here, like, fighting for their lives, and I'm over here, like, huh, I'm just talking my way through everything. Unseal door. Hmm? Hello, chairman. Well, look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. And I see you've brought the kid along. Babysitters may be expensive, but they're worth it, you know. The kid? Yeah, yeah, keep talking, pal. I'll just keep thinking of a place to bury your body. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? Jesus! The captain's treated me right. Better than any of you board folk ever have. I'm exactly where I want to be. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. How about I shoot you? Yeah, Chairman Rockwell, I presume. My word! You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, he's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. Okay, yeah. Um, Phineas would rather die than cooperate. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, We've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Okay. The crackpot is saving the frozen colonists you gave up on. Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done. It's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? <laughs> Are you kidding me? 
We're out here trying to clean up your mess. Yeah. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. Let's see. You know, I wouldn't have to if you'd be more cooperative about all this. You know, the thought honestly hadn't crossed my mind. I'm just trying to help. You prefer to keep riding this downward sp spiral? I can fix this place. Yeah. If I and my people can ride it out in luxury and happiness, yes, yes, I would. I don't know if you've noticed, Captain, but Halcyon's pretty much a lost cause. I mean, yeah. Oh, damn. I've already rallied Byzantium against you. It's only a matter of time. Um, with the resources and some of the folks on the Hope, we could do a lot. It's just business, Rockwell. Your resources and our gumption, we could do so much. Then you need my help. This isn't going anywhere, is it? I have rescuing to do. Don't be here when I get back yesterday. With your resources and some of the folks on the, the Hope, we could do a lot. I'll admit, there's no shortage of talent and scientists and engineers there. Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. Are you out of your mind? Rockwell's the biggest monster in Halcyon. You got any idea how many lives he's destroyed? How many people he's hurt? Oh, we can just kill him. I've had enough. You even think about cooperating with this... this animal? I didn't... <laughs> and you and I are finished. Whoa. Uh... Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Your loyalty is worth more than Rockwell's subservience. You're damn right it is. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna place more faith on this brat than the chairman of a fucking colony... Ah, my no bad. For you. Go get yourself killed. I mean... I'm sorry, Felix. I don't know why, but like, in my head I was like, well, if... We work together, but yeah, screw that guy. Never mind, I'm fucking... I'm stupid. <laughs> Felix was like, wait, hold on. Cameras. I'm trying to get straight with the Conde's orders. Only a few things more from my end, but I don't know what we'll do about cameras. She says security footage ain't enough, but they want proper reels. I feel like the music is very loud. I really hope that you're, you've been able to hear me this whole time. Okay, let's turn that down. Um, continue. Read cameras. Dang, that like, that got me. I was like, oh no. I don't know, but like, my justification, I really don't care about this, this camera bullshit. My justification for that was like, well, if he wants to be stupid and he cares about the colony, like, we could use the colonists to help. But then apparently that's like, if you say that, you're basically like siding with them. Whoops. Uh, I probably don't have a save I can go back to for that, so, oh well. I'm sorry, Felix, don't look at me like that. I didn't mean it. I thought there was an option to kill him with that. Maybe I just didn't get it this time. All right, MSI. Oh, hey. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and fight. I think what's funny about this is like, I'm just walking through here because I got the biometric ID and they're like over here being like, oh, fight. Like they're... <laughs> It's not necessary at this point. Ow! Boss, I'm ready. Let's do this. Well, we're taking damage and our eyes got all weird. Oh god, okay. Yeah, boss. Okay. Anything else? Something you need? At the end, nothing. Nothing at all. Okay. Well. Oh jeez. You have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. Cool. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. Okay, it's over, Sophia. Stand down. We're liberating Halcyon, and there's not a damn thing you can do to stop us. You sure love talking. Do they pay you by the word? Yeah, it's over. I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm aware of your diplomatic talents, Captain. You have a gift for manipulation. But I warn you, I'm no easy mark. For all your talents, you are the enemy of Halcyon. And therefore, you are my enemy. Wow, that's crazy. I wish I cared. I'm here for Phineas. Let him go. 
And you're gonna do your duty or die trying, I get it. Let's move it along. Have it your way, I'm going to enjoy putting you down. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here for Phineas. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. No, he's just an old man. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. I'm gonna save the colony. I'm gonna save the colony. Let's talk about this. Don't test me, Sophia. It's bad for your health. You don't understand. Phineas is my friend. I'm not leaving without him. I don't enjoy the thought of killing you. There's been enough violence already. Um. Yeah, don't test me. I'm aware of your propensity for violence. Halcyon is a bloodier place because of you. I wish you'd simply cooperated with me. You're the finest marksman in Halcyon. You could have been my gun. Well, um. I'm rescuing Phineas and I'm going through you if I have to. I had I'm going to talk it through. That. This prison is equipped with an auto mechanical warden. I've had it <sighs> programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something. Yeah, the one thing I, have, I haven't been looking forward to this whole entire time is this Fukin fight. Go ahead and quick save while I can because I'm gonna get pissed off for sure. Okay, here we go. I'm hoping that I have my weapons good enough <laughs> for this. Clever. Oh, 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 oh. Designate Ram as a hostile intruder? No way! That means that I could never... The two times I played this, I couldn't, um... Pass that door right there. Well, okay. I, I'm getting some help then. I'll take it. I want to take everything. Might as well. I see. I wonder if everything's gonna be able to kill it. Ah, shooker. We gotta fight it. <laughs> I. Let's do this. Oh, they already got it down way... Uh oh I know that the, the kit is like you have to get behind it. Or not the kit, but the hack. Oh my god, that was the easiest that fight has ever been. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Well, now you know, um, for future reference, if you haven't played the game, or if you have, and you haven't been able to pass that door, yeah, uh, you can get help. I raged so hard the first time I did this fight. I was streaming this, and I literally had to do the fight off camera because I was getting so pissed off. And then I just did it within like two seconds. That's exciting. Oh my god. I guess this, this is the other way. If I could speak words, oh no, this is for somewhere else. Whoa, wait a second. Hold on. Wait, is this the side area that I can go into? Look at all those frozen people. Hmm. Oh, that's just sealed, isn't it? Yeah, okay, never mind. Never mind. Wow. Alright. Let's do this. Why won't this Whoa! Two seconds. Get me out of here. 
You betcha. Yeah. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can't begin to thank you enough. Yeah. Um, let's see. Are you alright? What did they do to you? Are you kidding? The board never stood a chance against me. I know I wouldn't let anything happen to you. You know I wouldn't let anything happen to you, Phineas. Do you have any idea how much trouble I went through to save you? Yeah, they never stood a chance against me. Ah, all in a day's work for you, huh? Mm-hmm. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. Okay. Um, I don't... I don't like the sound of that at all. Great, and I was just about to pop up with some drinks and celebrate. <laughs> I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Oh. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? Yes. They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? What a wake-up call. I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only hope we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. I think that would be something good for um, the second game. Like, uh, I, I don't know, hold on, I'll, I'll do this in a second. I saw an article recently how um, they, I think it was like for the second game, um, they wanted to do something similar or something like that. But honestly, I think um, it would probably be like a good idea to have it take place to where you go and maybe you're, you're like a different person or something like that and you go and investigate Earth. Because I mean like, I don't know, I feel like that makes sense. But anyways, we have a lot of work ahead of us. We best get started. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? Obviously. Somebody has to run this colony. I'm the only competent person left. You can count on me. I'll help you revive the other colonists. I'm going to do what I've always done, whatever I want, all the time. Heh <laughs> heh. Yeah, I'll help you revive the other colonists. Yes, baby. When I revived you, Hold I on. thought you were going to help me save this colony. I was wrong. I had our roles reversed, you see. You're the one who's going to save us all. I'm just the one who set you on your path. Mm-hmm. You're the best thing to ever happen Hold to on, baby. Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to leave this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed. And so, we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? It's so quiet. Exciting, isn't it? Lifetime employment program ruined. Oh, the OSI the teaches that... Oh. teaches that everything in the universe <laughs> happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. Yeah. From the moment he landed That's me. in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the Hold board's on, baby. authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Yeah, I'm sure. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. 
engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. What? Okay. In the absence of the board's authority, Hold on. many of the colony settlements okay. banded together okay. with a single purpose in mind. Hey, bring me your phone. Survival. Go Life get your phone. Especially hard I'll put on tummy. Some towns yeah. dissolved by Go get attrition it. and starvation. But most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Hell yeah, the Between board's gone. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra 2 townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclasts enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal here. to Reed was pressured into leaving town. And those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. I wish we could have seen that though. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, it was said that he lasted exactly that way with two it. days oh. outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave Junle the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities yeah, I'm about sure. the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Yeah, sure. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Some even had to get jobs. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. Olivia and Minnie Ambrose worked together to cure the marauders a dream of time had created. Hey. Through their partnership as scientist and administrator, they discovered the harmony that had eluded them as mother and daughter. And through years of patience and effort, they discovered the means to wean Halcyon from the scourge of a dream of time. Yay. Their work eventually allowed Wells and his scientists to treat many of Halcyon's marauders. As their addiction waned, the colonists who had lived for so long under the thrall of a dream of time returned to their communities and loved ones and joined in the effort to save Halcyon. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. The Rizzo's company in Halcyon dissolved after the collapse of the board. Oh, to say, look, look, look. The launch of Spectrum Brown was indefinitely delayed. A stockpile of Spectrum Brown remains buried deep beneath the ruins of the old distillery, abandoned to time and attrition. Hopefully nobody digs Ruth that up. Bellamy never forgot the words you said to her. 
She coped with Belinda's death by committing to live in a way that would make her sister proud. When the remnants of the colony banded together, Ruth Bellamy was there to help. She devoted her remaining years and resources to saving the colony. Years later, when the worst of the crisis had passed, Aether Ways returned to Halcyon's culture. An aging Ruth Bellamy tried her hand at directing. Her first Aetherwave drama was dedicated to the memory of Belinda Bellamy and to her old friend, Captain of the Unreliable. Captain Pickle! The dissolution of the board did not mean the dissolution of the ambitions of Cedric Kincannon, the charismatic leader of Sublight Underground. Cedric offered Slug's transportation services to the newly thawed colonists and set to work ferrying resources and food wherever they were most needed. For better or worse, slug headgear became fashionable in the following year. <laughs> As the board began to disintegrate, Spencer Woolrich found himself at a crossroads. Cling to what little stardom remained to him or help usher Halcyon into its new future. To the surprise of many, perhaps himself most of all, Spencer chose the latter option. Having learned a variety of different skills in the many different roles played throughout his lengthy career, Spencer founded a radio serial dedicated to staying alive despite the odds. Aww. His subjects included how to survive violent encounters with only grazing wounds. Dispense pithy one-liners for tense scenarios. <laughs> and, of course, how to look good doing both. Yeah. After a brief attempt at dating Helen as one person rather than two, which both Bertie and Helen found too strange, Bertie struck out on his own to try his hand at raising woolly cows. That's what? Many of his former Rangers teammates soon followed. What the heck? Accompanied by the woolly cow, the team had originally plied with alcohol. The dairy farm thrived under Bertie's leadership and care. Well, that's good. The dairy Rangers privately believed that the woolly cow softened Bertie's temper considerably. Although the only one brave enough to say this to his face was promptly headbutted. <laughs> Due to the board's dissolution, many of the Prophet's old customers no longer found quite the same value in productivity seminars that they once had. With her business drying up, the Prophet chose to take her followers down a new path. Months later, salvagers on Eridanos found clues leading them to a seemingly abandoned bunker out in the wilderness. Inside, they discovered horribly mangled corpses sacrificed to a blood-scrawled portrait of a sprat-headed deity. The Prophet was not among the bodies. Oh my god. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Whoa. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Bellstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his Aww. adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with. And he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. 
He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Wow. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. And Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. <laughs> the stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail, or clearing an infestation. Mm -hmm. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Mm -hmm. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. Breakthroughs and dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. Aww. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. I like how they reskinned this, basically. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you? the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon. Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, I think like the... I, I'm wanting to say like the first time I, I uh, finished this, I cried. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. We already finished it. Oh, man. Such a great game. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm really hoping that, um, with the next one, we do, like, some kind of exploring, like, to Earth and stuff. Like, obviously, like, you know, they're, they've been doing their best to get Halcyon, like, better. And, like, through all this, you know, it's saying, like, hey, you know, everyone got to come back. You know, whatever. So, like, what if we play, like, a descendant of one of the colonists? 
and then we're like, oh, hey, you know, um, I don't know, I just think going back to Earth would be interesting. Like, you know, going back and exploring and being like, hey, you know, what happened? Why haven't we heard anything? You know, what happened to Earth? You know? Because I don't think it ever says, like, what exactly, like, like, why Earth went dark? And why there's, like, I mean, it probably did. I probably just didn't, like, soak it in or anything. But I don't know, that's, that's just my thoughts. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. Because I know, like, Terra 2 was supposed to be, like, the new Earth or whatever. Um, so, I mean, you know, there's that. But... I don't know. I just, I really don't want, like, the same thing for the next game. Because I love this game. I've played this game now three times. And, um... It's a fantastic game. And I just, I don't know. I don't want to see it just, like, the second game just be, like, a reskin. Like, okay, here's the same... Here's the same everything. But it's, you know, different character or whatever. Or different, different NPCs and stuff like that. Like, I want something more. Um... But I, I, I do like the, uh, how it was, like, everybody in, like, their lives afterwards and stuff like that. That's sad, though, that Phineas never got to see the fruits of his labor. You know, whatever. That's his, that's his legacy. So, you know. There's that. <sighs> Man. That's a lot of thank yous. Focus testers. Development weddings. Oh man, development babies. Oh, in memoriam. <sighs> it just it just makes me wanna um <laughs> play New Vegas again. Uh like all these all these voice actresses and actors. I know I know Ashley Birch. She's like the only one that I know like off the top. I probably know some of these other ones, but I'd probably have to look them up. Samuel Hoth- oh, Haythorn. Haythorn Thwaith. Wait. Crazy. I think it would be so cool to be in a video game. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot of fun, you know, doing mocap and voice lines and stuff like that and getting to be like, hey, I'm this character and blah blah. Um, I would absolutely love that, but you know, I just I just sit at home and uh, make videos and play games, and that's it. But that would be cool, you know, to <laughs> if the developers are watching, please. No. Uh, that's crazy. Like it only got two DLCs too. That's something. But at least the DLCs were good, you know. Um, I like that. Man, I really want to play a Fallout game now. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, Obsidian, they made uh, Fallout New Vegas, and then obviously, um, by this time, you know, everybody hopefully ha has had a chance to watch the new Fallout series, which is fantastic. It's great. And uh, I've wanted to play another Fallout game. I've played New Vegas like 10 times, probably way more than that. Um, I've tried my hand at the first two Fallout games, and in the first one, I think it was, I was progressing faster than I was leveling up, so I was getting like my ass handed to me. And then in the second one, I think I just couldn't figure out where to go, or I just couldn't get stuff done, or I couldn't afford something. I don't know, I don't remember, but I also like, I basically rage quit both games. And I have a hate-love relationship with Fallout 3. Like, Fallout 3 was my first Fallout game and everything, but, um... I had a hard time. Oh... I wonder if I can, like... Hold on. Can I? No, I can't. I was gonna see if I could, uh... Scroll the... <laughs> credits. Oh, man. I wish it were longer. I really do. Like, I wish we had more places to go. I also wish that you could, like... I mean, it... I don't know, like... 
I do wish that we could play the game after we finish it, but at the same time, like, I guess it's a good thing that we can't. Because then they would have to add in, well, I mean, like, I guess it wouldn't be hard if, you know, you finish the main story, but then you'd have nothing to do afterwards, is what I'm trying to say. And you could see, like, you know, we could go back to Edgewater, and we could see that they turned the cannery into a garden, and, you know, all, we can go find all the Hope people and all that stuff, but obviously not. I don't know, I just, I really like playing games that you can continue playing, but there's only so much that you can, I guess, like, do with this. Hey, this, this is my favorite ambience music in the entire game. I love it. Absolutely love it. Every time that, uh, there's like two places that do it. I know one was, um, oh my god, Roseway? Not Roseway. Ugh. <sighs> The place where the guy has, like, the sprats in his little apartment complex thing. Or his little, like, house. I can't think of the freaking name of it right now. Or where the dude was selling drugs and the drugs were in the sprats. I can't think of the, the place. But yeah, it, it's there. And then I think it's somewhere in, um... I'm wanting to say I heard it in the Murder on Eridanos DLC. i wanted to say. Oh. Look at that, Paralon Gorgon. I want. I guess these have their own. Yeah. Wow. Even the DLCs have their own. Um, what's it called? Credits. Jesus Christ. That's really cool. I didn't even know that they were gonna show the DLCs in the uh, credits. Wow. I don't know if there's anything, like, at the end. Like, can I? I'm pretty sure if I hit space, it's going to go to the main menu. But, I mean, that's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and end this here. So I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Uh, this was a fun game to go through again. And it's crazy. Like, I thought that there wouldn't be as many, like, episodes or parts to the series as there is. <laughs> we almost made it to 80. Almost. Um... I feel like if I would have made some videos smaller, we probably would have gotten up to like 80, 80 plus at least. Um, hey, look at that people met on the the set or the place of Obsidian and then got together. Oh, that's cool. Huh. It has like the same uh, voice people. Um, but yeah, this is a great game. Uh, now I have to figure out what else I'm going to play. Obviously, we're, we're going to keep, a, a, as I'm uploading this and everything, I'm going to keep uploading boulders. And then along that, I'll figure something else out. So I still have two games going at least. Because I, I kind of like ha having that um, that variety, you know, like one game and the other. So it's like, you know, if I upload a game and it's like, oh, I don't want to watch that. At least there's something else that can be watched. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and end this here. <laughs> so you have a good rest of your day. Bye.